So now we have a bouncing ball that looks pretty good, but it does look very computer generated. You'll notice that the ball is bouncing perfectly straight up and down, no side to side movement and no rolling at all. And that's a very unlikely thing to happen. So we're going to add a little bit of motion in one direction and we're going to add some roll to the ball as well. You'll also notice that my current version of this, the ball is bouncing off screen a little too far. So I'm also going to take a minute to readdress my camera location. So earlier we had locked the camera. I'm going to go ahead and unlock that camera now just by clicking on this little camera lock button to free the camera up. Now I can move my camera back until the ball is framed a little more clearly. The top of this first bounce, I want it to go ahead and be pretty close to the top of the screen. And now I can relock the camera again. So the next thing to look at is the forward and backward motion. For us, that's going to be our Translate X. And you'll notice if I move my Translate X, I get a little bit of a bump in that curve. Um, if I undo it, you'll see that as it is now, my Translate X is perfectly flat all the way across. Now, I want my ball to continuously be moving from one side of the screen to the other. And I can do that by adjusting these keys to get the motion that I want. And you'll notice that as the curve goes upward, our ball moves from left to right across the screen. However, I want this to just be a progressive move across the screen. So I actually don't need all of these keyframes. This is more data than is necessary to achieve that motion. So what I'm gonna do instead, let's kind of zoom out and I'm just going to delete all of these keyframes in between the first and last one. I'll select them in the graph editor and I'll hit delete. Now I can just choose the start location and the ending location of this bounce by adjusting these keyframes. I can move this keyframe up by holding shift and middle clicking and put the end pose where I want the last bounce to be and I'll just have it slightly off screen to screen right. When I go back to the beginning of my timeline, I can adjust where I want this bounce to start. Now again, it's kind of hard to interpret the graph editor when I can't see all of it. So I can hit F to frame the entire thing, or I can hit this button to frame it. I can also again hold right click and zoom in and out just to give myself some more space. And again, I'll hold shift and middle click to move this first keyframe until it's slightly off screen as well. And so now what I should get is this bounce across screen. However, notice that at the beginning, the ball is moving forward slowly and then it kind of speeds up and then kind of gets to this end destination a little quickly. Now I'm just going to go ahead and select both of these keyframes and hit auto tangent just so we kind of have a good starting point here. But there's no real reason for the ball to accelerate here. If you think about this, the ball not moving forward at the beginning and then starting to move forward implies that some force acted on it. It's almost as if the ball were bouncing straight up and down and then the wind blew it forward. And that's not really what I want it to look like. I want it to look like maybe somebody off screen threw the ball. When you throw a ball, the minute you release it, that's the most amount of energy the ball will have in that entire action. Because of gravity, because of friction and all the other forces, that ball will slowly lose that energy and start to slow down. So I want the ball to be traveling fast at the very beginning. And so to do that, I'm going to make this tangent sharper. And so we have fast motion coming out and then it's going to ease in to this last keyframe. And if I hit play now, you'll see that that's the motion we're getting. Again, I want to remind you that what we're seeing on our screen here is what we will get in our render in this area here. The gray area outside will not render. And sometimes 
even though we know that, it's still hard to remember that when we're watching this video. So just to make it clearer, I'm going to select my camera and go to my attribute editor and I'm going to make my mask opaque. So to do that, I will go out to display options and I will make my opacity one. And then I usually like to set this to black just so it's clear for me to see what I'm not going to be able to see. So that means my current animation looks like this.